computer. There we go. Right. <clears throat> Good morning, all. Good morning, Peter. Last time, I think we did things on engraving on wood. Uh, and I wanted you to try and get some images of engraved wood, um, which I'm sure wasn't that difficult. Um, in fact, I tried to make it easy for you, he said. Um, and I specifically excluded any other thing but wood. So you couldn't you have metal engraved, for instance, or stone or anything like that. that those are for next time or the time after, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> um, so uh, and this time I'm going on to, um, you remember last, I think it was, um, I'll get the date in a minute. Back in 2019, we did photo biographies. Do you remember those uh, who were yeah. with me then? Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought I'd start uh, do another set of those. And so I've, uh, I've done one for you to see later on. Um, and it, it arose from my trip to Whitby. So I'll give you a guess who the photographer was. Frank Sutcliffe. Correct. <laughs> you all know Mr. Sutcliffe, do you? Only because I've looked him up <laughs> after your email. Oh, Frank Meadow Sutcliffe, that's the guy. Middle name Meadow, how about that? Uh, anyway, we're, we're diverting, we want to do engraved wood first, don't we? I want to see what results you managed to achieve. Um, so, um, anyone would like to kick off with, with what they have? Never, oh, I can with... start if you like, because we've had family here, so um, I've not done very much. Um, and I know Terry's probably taking about 700 photographs at Stratford Subcastle to pick a few uh, from. Um, okay. so I, I, Hold on, Roger's got to leave at some point, and Elizabeth, so I'm not quite sure when they've got to go. Can okay. you tell me, Roger? When? When, yeah. when, yeah. when, uh, when a sun arrives, basically. So do, you want us to go? do you want to Do you mean do you want us to start? I don't want you to miss out by people being in front of you. Okay, oh. right. okay we'll go then. Right. So if, right? it, if we do Roger and Elizabeth first, uh, Alan. Yeah, no problem. Okay, good. Okay, you're going to share screen. Hope that's all acceptable to you. Uh, security, yeah, okay, yep. Shall I go for these mm. are mine? Right, these are mine. I haven't been very far, to be honest. <clears throat> these are plaques we bought in France some years ago. Um, and given them to our sons. And given them to our sons. And having given them to our son, they are now a bit dusty, as you can <laughs> see. <laughs> so that is a, well, presumably, a, a cottage scene in France. Okay. What I quite like about this, when I photographed it, I managed to get a bit of sunlight on the figure outside and the steps and the house remaining in the sun. Sorry, in the, in, in, in the shade. Right. Yes, I can see that. Yeah. I to see the woman is carrying a pint of beer. Well, I don't mind if, if uh, uh, Richard. Anyway, okay, so that's that one. Just a minute, just a minute. It was just a thing. You got the light coming down to give you shadows, and therefore you can see all the carvings properly. Yeah. Why were you concerned about the roof being in the shade? Well, it wasn't. No, no. No, I just thought that the way it is, it emphasises the, the figure on the outside. And oh, I see. Yes, it does do that, certainly, yes. It just looks more like a background, basically. Okay, so that's that one. Oh, is, this piece of, is this piece of timber portable? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Could you have tilted it at an angle, for instance? Probably, yeah. 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 You then make the shadows more sort of realistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was, it was just on a photograph on a window, so but quite bright. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the colour's good. Mm. And I like the dust. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. This was bought well, when we bought these in France. This was bought at, at the same time. 
and uh, well, just basically just an interior scene, as you can see. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yep. Fine. So that's only two wood carvings or whatever I, I've done. Um, two other pictures. We haven't been very far, as I said, this is just taking the garden light on some leaves early one morning. Sunlight on some leaves. It's lovely light coming through those leaves. Mm, mm, mm. That's, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, and I managed to get the background diffused. Yes. yes. Okay. And the last one is shadows of leaves on the back fence. Right, okay, yeah. Stunned silence. <laughs> it's almost like an engraved wood as well. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think they're all they're all stunning. Love them all. I do, oh, I think it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the texture of the fence is, is quite nice, isn't it, actually? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely something different because you don't normally see that sort of thing, do you? No, no, no. Okay, so or there as well. Yeah, that's it. Right, so the, those are those. I'm going to get two Elizabeth's now. Did you uh, convert that to monochrome or is the fence? I did, I did, yeah, I, I did. yeah, yeah. Right now, Elizabeth. <coughs> You've got more than me this time. Yep. Uh, this is the King and Queen of Bowdoin, isn't that the no, right? Benin. Benin. Benin, is it? Yeah. Uh, Nigeria. Uh, we had a head of house who, who was uh, uh, a Nigerian fellow. And when he left, uh, a, few, uh, a few years after, he, he sent me uh, through the post. The, you'll see the other pictures, uh, the other statue as well. And they're really carved. They're very beautiful. You had a letter, didn't you, with his name on it? Everything on, about that. it, can't find yeah. it. No. Oh, I see. So you put that in the on the table with the light on mm. the right? On the, yeah, on the left-hand side of the third mm. statue, mm. yes. Yes. Uh, it shows up the texture very well. Sorry? Shows up the texture. Yeah, yeah. Like just moving on. That's the king. <laughs> oh, is it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you say Benin, Benin are famous for, for uh, lost wax process, aren't they, for, for producing bronze um, heads and things? Mm -hmm. they did wood as well. I don't know what wood this would be. Would it be ebony or oh, no idea? No idea. Or tree wood. Mm -hmm. I just did the back as well because I thought it was so engraved, you know. You should have shown that first. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. That's a, um, basically the two from the front. Okay. Mm. Right, okay. Right, so moving on to... That was another thing one of the Nigerian boys brought me as well. So it's a, just a face mask. It's right? on the kitchen wall, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a plaque. Plaque. Yeah. 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 But yeah. not the same person. Mm -hmm. It's another. Yes. Quite. I'd like that on my wall. <laughs> Sorry? I'd you... quite like that on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's uh, under her eyes. Is it black or is that just a shadow? No, and there, um, it's just a, there's nothing there at all. It's just been cut out completely. Ah, and when I, yes. It doesn't yes. look like it, but I've got it on a kind of, um, they call it mizzle, the colour, but it's a, a greeny grey. Uh, but it doesn't show up like it did when it was on a very light one. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Nice. Right, two other pictures. You see, we didn't go very far, but uh, I no, thought that was quite nice with the sky behind. Mm -hmm. The same plant that I took. Um, finally, sorry. 
Sorry. What plant is that? That's wisteria. Wisteria, yeah. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. This year it hung on to the leaves much longer than it normally is, like, like, like all trees, I suppose. Oh, they'll be gone by the end of this weekend, I think. I think they will, yeah. I just did a mixture of leaves I saw on the floor. As I said, we haven't been very far this week at all. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, you can you can go now. <laughs> not going. We're not going. Not going yet. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see everybody else's. <laughs> right. On Alan. Uh, okay. Um... Uh, where I went was um, Britford Church, which is not very well lit, um, but uh, there are some pew ends there uh, that I took. Um, so uh, I was trying to get comparisons of the light how it affected as I was taking it from a different angle. Oh, that was clever. How is it going funny? Yeah. Um, oh, I see what the problem is. I need to move that, I think. And uh, then there's uh, that one. Now, there was also one which I thought was slightly more effective, but there's a damn great pole in the way of the this pew end. Um, and I was just really trying to see how changing my angle of view would affect how it was lit. So um, it was quite dark in the church. Well, you know, natural light, it was a bit hard to find. And you don't want metal ones, so well, they're ready for next time. And that was... Uh, a tree on the way back from Britford, which I thought was an uh, interesting shape. And we went to Blashford Lakes and they, uh, somebody had made some wicker bees and were hanging them from the tree. There's three of them, one there, there and there, which were, um, which were, they're just grab shots, but it was it's surprising to walk through the path and then come along these, to these um, sculptures, which is quite interesting. It's quite an interesting place to go if anybody wants to walk. It's all flat and uh, plenty of birds there if you're into that. And there's well, some wicker bees as well. Where was it? Blashford Lakes. It's just before you get to Ringwood. I know, yeah. Hmm. Okay. So there you go. Oh, thank you, yes. <laughs> so they're wicker bees. Yeah, as opposed to wicker man. I don't know whether they put bees inside and then set fire to them. <laughs> there's also a number of um, wooden sculptures there. Oh, yeah, there's a um, really good owl. Th there's um, a mushroom there that must be at least five foot tall. A wooden mushroom. Oh, that's just along from the um, where, where you got the bees as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know all this, I don't. Ellingham <laughs> Lake. It, it's on the edge of. Yes, right. Anybody else like to present their work? Well, I'll have a go. Oh, right. Okay, I'm thanking you. Uh, share. That's it. Oh, yeah. No, that's not what I wanted. Come on, where are you going to? That's what I want. Right. You got those? Uh, I can see the thumbnails only. Oh, then now we got it. Yes. That was in the um, the church we went to, Peter, and you were doing the lighting for me. Oh, that was the uh, uh, St Lawrence's House, uh, yeah. of Castle. Yeah, but I, I, I cut the top off, unfortunately. But that was one that you lit for me. Oh, well, yes, right. This one is. I'm not sure you'd call that carving. And I don't like the blue rope there, but I couldn't get rid of it. But that's obviously in the cathedral, but it's I mean, this carved from a, a piece of wood. So I don't know whether you would count that, but I rather like that. 
and that's the natural light coming in. It's, it's straining the, um, the the brief, I think, a little bit. Yeah. Well, I thought so, but I, I thought, well, anyway, that's that was one. These are all in the cathedral and with the light from my torch. All and right. I, and the colours were, as you'll see, were all different in every one, and I'm not quite sure why. But I, I like I like that being up that corner and the, the rest of it um, immaterial. Um, that one, of course, is again that's my light, and it's come out blue on there, and I don't know why. But that's in the choir. Mm. And that's that again. You see, it's come out blue. So why would it come out blue with a torchlight? White balance. Yes, yeah, the colour temperature. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. But, well, but I, actually, I quite I quite like that one. Anyway, even if it is a a different colour. So mm -hmm. how would I have uh, got over that? Um, put a filter over the torch, or. Ah. Change Change it in Fast Stone Viewer to uh, tweak the colour. Okay. It's easy to do in Fast. It's very easy to do in Fast Stone Viewer. The only problem is you might have altered the background as well. Yeah, but that yes, but you could try it now if you wanted to, uh, Anne. If you push your um, cursor to the left. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to put my glasses on. Okay. I think it's. Um, hmm, I think it might be a just light lighting, or it might be a just colour. I can't remember which. Um, well, it's got hue and saturation there. Uh, you could uh, tweak the hue minutely. <clears throat> Left or right? I don't know. Or, or up or down? Let's try it to see. No. Have you got a mouse wheel on your mouse? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm using. Hover over, the, hover over that bit and w tweak the mouse wheel. You can move the colours. So you made it not you made it bluer at the moment. Yeah. But your mouse, mouse somewhere over that line doesn't have to be on that thing. It's there. The other way. Now put move your mouse. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Obviously, not the way to do it. <laughs> Wouldn't a torch have made it orange rather than blue? Well, yeah. Click the X on the right hand side of that line to zero it back. Right. Uh, I would suggest you go to, well, you've got the blue slider here. Try moving that instead. That was the one I used. No, no, you did the hue. Yeah. The, the, bottom, the bottom of the three, red, green, blue. The three sliders there. Oh, blue there, yeah. Yeah, well, try the same trick there. <laughs> you go a bit wild, don't you? 50 times. <laughs> Getting browner. The idea of the mouse wheel is so you can do it incrementally, very little okay, bit. Okay. You'll find. I'm doing it now. But it's going, oh, that's going all more blue. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. Oh, well. Anyway, I think that, I think that's my last one. But just click cancel for a moment on that bit. Yeah. Then again, go back while we're here. Go back to the left-hand side and click the other option that was there called Adjust Lighting. Light. That might be the colour temperature one. Uh, no, it isn't. All right, forget that. <laughs> OK. It was there somewhere. Just got OK, around. well, I'll, I'll faff around with it at some time stage, but that's my last one, I think. So okay. I'll stop share. OK, thank you very much. <clears throat> right. Come on then, Diana, you can give us a go, can't you? Uh, well, I, I was looking for something more intricate, you know, like the fine st sort of stuff. That's what I thought you wanted, not sort of carvings and such like. I did, yes, I did, yes. Oh, OK, so I wasn't, like, barking up the wrong tree. Um, and I haven't got anything here in my house of that nature. <laughs> So I went to the art gallery thinking I'd find something there and I didn't. Mm. And then I went to the museum today, this afternoon. 
and found one thing. So I'll show you the one thing. Okay. Um, so that's that was a little bit of blurb about the one thing that I found. If you, can you read that? Yep. Yeah. So I'll leave you to read well. through it. And the heavens, the wavy design represents the conduct of the spirit must place before reaching the sacred well. It's all very deep. Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, it was the it was uh, in the museum of the first Australians, the in the Aboriginal groups. All right. So that that's what they're referring to. And the lighting was really poor in there. It was really dull and. I didn't. I couldn't use a flash because it. You can't use flashes in there, so I had to try just do my best with that one. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Looking close up to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that was from the art gallery. This, that's not actually engraved. It's just painted on. Okay. Very nice. Funnily enough, um, that, that column there, well, those columns there, yeah. when I was in Beverly uh, Church, Minster, sorry, the Minster in Beverly, they had columns coloured like that. If I can find them, I'll show you. <clears throat> anyway, go on. And that's a group of them. Right. <clears throat> yes, right. And that, okay. That's all I've got for today. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, I've got some Peter. Okay, let's have a look at um, Terry's. Terry will have lots, I suspect. <laughs> Did he say 24? No, I said four. <laughs> I've got four. That's just as well. Somebody's always, broken up. That's all we really need, I think. It's okay, no. Um, uh, this, these were taken in Steeple Langford Church, um, and I tried playing with um, lighting. Right. So the first one on the left-hand side is um, pure daylight. Um, the second one in the middle is um, LED lit full uh, from the left. That's with my um, little light that um, you were using at uh, Stratford, Peter. I know. And then the one on the right is the um, same LED, but on low. Um, these are all taken with a 90 mil macro lens at about five or six foot away from the subject. And then I've, I've put them into um, the, the format there. Um, I used one six of a second at F 2.8 and ISO 100. And I had previously used a grey scale um, in another part of the church to get the white balance. And I don't think the white balance was the same at this part of the church as the other part. Um, okay. But I, I did use the um, white balance that I'd got at the other side. Um, so the next one. I'm just going to say before you go. Now, that's the opposite opposite side of the church where I did actually use the um, white balance cards. First time I've used them. Um, at, uh, we were talking about it, weren't we, Peter, about um, how to get the white balance right. Now, yes. this one is pure daylight and it's lit from three directions. Um, behind me, either there are two large windows um, and to the right, there is another largish window and to the left, a small window. So that's that's pure daylight, that one. And that's on the end of one of the pews. It, this, again, is Steeple Langford Church. Yeah. <laughs> Terry, are they... Are um, they that, that one. Sorry, Terry, are they raw images? Are they raw images? Did you photograph them in raw? Terry? I haven't picked that up, but this problem with my sound. 
Okay, I'll, I'll say it again. Are they, were, were they photographed in camera raw? Can't hear. Can't hear, right. Okay. Sorry, I, I, I couldn't. Uh, all I picked up there was camera raw. Yes, they were done in camera raw. Yeah. Did you try adjusting the white balance in camera raw? And they've not been adjusted other than um, just the uh, white balance. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Sorry, I couldn't pick that up, Roger. No, I just asked if you adjusted the white balance in camera raw. That's all. Now, this one was taken in Stratford Subcastle Church, and this was on the first day we went out, and I lit that from below. Again, it's taken with my 90 mil macro lens at about uh, 10 foot away, and that's cropped to about 50% of the crop. Uh, what I liked about this one was um, the, the lighting on it, but the White balance, I don't think is quite right. I, I used the um, uh, color picker um, on the top right hand corner and the white balance goes down to 3990, which is perhaps a lot less than I would have expected. The other ones I took, the white balance was 5772, which is fairly close to daylight. Um, interesting on this one is um, all the the way it's been eaten around here, and also um, the cobwebs. Mm. Oh, morning, Stan. Morning, Stan. Morning. morning. How are you? Well, thank you. Having a problem with um, hearing the sound. I, I can't understand any of the sound that's coming through. Yeah. Um, this one. Um, a mosaic from um, all the photographs or a load of the photographs I took at Stratford Subcastle. In the background is the church itself um, with the topiary in front of it and then superimposed over the top of that is the um, uh, carving, wooden carving of the lion and unicorn um, that is over the main door. And then superimposed over that are um, eight of the um, carvings that are up in the roof. First time I've really tried a, um, properly a montage and I've done it by um, a video that Roger um, put through to me from a guy called Barry Beckham and his videos are very good. Yes, now we know, we all That's know. amazing. That. Last one, um, again, took them... sorry, can I, can you say that again? Diana was Wait. saying it's amazing, the last one. Oh, you, you liked like... that one, did you? I'm pleased, <laughs> that one. Yes, that's good, that's good, very nice. It reminds me of- and My very last one, um, I was out and about driving between a couple of the villages and I saw this partial archway um, up at Dinton Woods. Unfortunately, there was a lady walking along and I thought the blue complemented the um, autumn colours as opposed to having somebody in red. And I, I think it was better with, with her in blue. And I was quite pleased with that photograph. I have cropped in slightly from the left um, because there were a couple of distractions there um, but I was pleased with the overall um, shape of the um, trees and that's my lot Peter. Okay right thank you very much sorry to hear about your 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 audio. <clears throat> yeah I, I had difficulty in in hearing any of the comments um, you're much better now. Perhaps it, I, I might have something wrong this end with my um, internet connection. Okay, right. But the sound's okay now. Oh, good. <laughs> well, so if anybody wanted to make any comments, um, Roger, you were certainly making some comments about um, using camera raw. When you were talking about the white balance and you used the grey card in the yes. 
Uh, I just wondered whether you tried adjusting the white balance in Camera Raw in Photoshop. Yes, I did. Um, when when I got the um, uh, the shot with the the grey card in it, um, I took the color picker from the grey card, and then I put that and I checked what the level was, and over a period of half an hour, the um, uh, levels on the white card had changed quite a bit. In the in the first part, it was six oh five oh. And then it went down to five five zero zero and five five zero zero is just about daylight. So I actually sat in between the two at five seven five five seven five oh or somewhere around that to um, get the level that I thought was about right for that particular um, day time and inside that church. Inter interestingly, I noticed that Roger and Elizabeth are now almost natural colours instead of being yellowy. And I suspect it's because it's raining outside. Because no, you've pulled the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> but it's raining here now. <clears throat> Somebody else made some comments as well. I think it might have been Diana. Um, can I answer your questions now? Well, <clears throat> Terry, I'd agree with you, what you said about the, the colour with your... Diana. Sorry. Yes, I am muted. Uh, I'm here now. Uh, I like the picture where you um, added lots of images to the same picture. Yes, as I said, that was a, that was a montage that um, yeah. um, Roger had put me on to a guy called Barry Beckham a couple of years ago. And um, I we've been discussing a couple of different issues and Roger put me back to Barry Beckham again. And I've gone through a few of his videos and I thought um, I've not really done a montage properly. And I looked at his video and, and gone through mostly by the way he'd done it. Um, very, very good, his videos for uh, both use of Photoshop, Lightroom. And if you go on to his um, YouTube pages, um, you can pick up uh, and onto his website you can pick up his tutorials. And although on his tutorials, you've got um, Lightroom, Photoshop, and all sorts of other bits and pieces, um, there, there is one you can click on to YouTube. And if you go into his YouTube channel and subscribe to that, um, when he's got new ones, um, an email comes through to you and shows you what he's doing. But his, his video, I thought on, um, montage was very good and I know Roger has used that one on um, a load of his montages which are very good. I haven't actually ever tried to do that so I'll look him up and have a go. He does actually live in Australia, he's English but he emigrated to Australia about 15 years ago Diana. Oh, he could live down the road. He could do, probably. <laughs> <laughs> he could well do it. <laughs> But his videos are extremely clear. The graphics are excellent and they're very easy to follow, I find. But that's a personal mm -hmm. problem. Um, yes, I'll put in the chat a link to the montaging tutorial we did using Photoshop Elements. If you look on chat, you'll see. Um, mm -hmm. It's put a while ago though, I can't remember when. Um, anyway, it, it works, and that's exactly the same sort of thing. If you look right at the scroll down to the bottom, if you look at the page, I can I can sh share it with you. If we can't do it, it's probably quicker, isn't it? I, I've copied it across. Yeah, well, I'll just show, share that particular frame. Yeah, there you are at the bottom there. There's my sister and getting married, and that was sort of a few of the pictures of their their ceremony and things. And this is the process here, all described in words. Okay, um, take back to square one. Um, so you can look at that later if you want to. Now you've got that Thank you. montage link. So, right, um, Wayne, did you manage to do anything? Yes, I did. Um, yeah, yes. as people know, I'll, I'll hope the internet holds up. Um, I have been confined to barracks 
Um, and as you can see, I've got my new eyes now. Your new oh, eyes. Are you seeing? Are you, are you seeing a, I don't know, a little game board? A little thumbnail at the moment. Oh, right, done it wrong. Okay, hang on. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I had it up. Let me get it up. Um, so I've been confined to barracks because I've had my eyes done. And yes. actually yesterday um, was the first time I actually got my camera out. So um, hopefully you can see a sort of game board now. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. So I've only got two things which had wood engraving in the house. And um, <clears throat> this is a little thing I picked up on one of my travels. Um, and uh, I must admit, because I was a bit worried about being able to focus, this is my new eye. And uh, I'll tell you that my old eye, everything is yellow, which I absolutely hadn't realized. And uh -huh. I looked at the window this time last week and went, oh my gosh, somebody has put Photoshop in my brain. Um, so all the colors look so much more normal. Anyway, I wasn't so, I, I, these are cheapo Tesco glasses, so I wasn't sure I'd be able to focus. So I actually got the tripod out, um, but I'm delighted. I actually reset my camera for the first time in two years to use my dominant eye and I'm so delighted. Um, but I, I put the tripod on um, partly to actually help me focus um, with my new eye. And uh, so therefore it helped with the light because I took these at half past four yesterday and this is just natural light coming through the window. Um, but obviously um, not much light at half past four. Um, so these are actually quite long exposures. So they're about six seconds or so um, for quite a lot of them. Um, now, I don't know if this is going to move right. Oh, hang on, how do I get rid of you? Oh, if you go down to the middle, there's an arrow. There oh, it's moved. I think it's just taking a while. If you go um, to the mother. So have you got a chair now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this is, um, this is the only other thing I had to photograph. Um, so this is a chair that my dad um, got when his office many, many years ago was being destroyed. And he said, you're not throwing those out. He thought they were Chippendale, but family never knows. Um, so I did this with natural light against the um, front window. Again, it's quite a long exposure. It's about six seconds. And, and then this is one that my dad carved himself mm -hmm. to make up a set because there was a carver and two chairs. And so this is his, his attempt at carving. I don't know if you can see it yet, but I deliberately chose different lighting. Um, this one has not got the, the light on in the house, um, but this one does. So I don't know if you're seeing the close up one yet. Yes, we yes. Are. Um, so again, I've got this blue thing going on, which others noticed. Um, so the, 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 the dining room lights on, which is why the background looks even to my new eyes a little pinky, um, but I liked the contrast between the top light and the side light from the window and also shows the better carving of <laughs> Mr. Chippendale, quote unquote, and, uh, and my dad's carving, which, uh, which uh, don't, and they're actually fabulous to sit on and they're proper Chippendale carvers. Um, and, and that's just a close up of, of the, the arm. Uh, that one actually was a 30 second exposure because I liked, I wanted it to be slightly dark so that you could see the leaves sort of growing out of the dark. That's the, the arm. But that was it. Well, the, the, the reason to the blue is because you've got mixed lighting. So yeah. High, high temperature, high color temperature daylight and your low color temperature home light, shall we put yeah. it. And that's why. I mean, I remember going to Wells Cathedral and photographing the high altar there, and I wasn't to use, allowed to use my flash, so I had to use daylight, uh, sorry, tungsten colour film for it, colour slide film, and that meant that the window light was very blue, and everything lit with the light from the windows was very blue, and the rest was correct, very marked. But that was in film days. Yeah. So uh, anyway, right, thank you very much. That's well, I must admit, I don't actually know which is the correct color now because my left eye is seeing everything yellow and my right eye is seeing everything with a blue tinge. Mm. So it's, it's rather a game at the moment, but I'm okay. so delighted, I can see. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah.
good company because I've got the same problem. But I've only had one of mine done, but I'm due to have the other one done between now and Christmas. Oh, well, I hope, are you going to have them done both the same? Because I've got now two distance glasses, whereas I used to have one close and one distance is how I've been born all my life. Anyway, I've, but I'm glad I've, because I've always had both of them. Tesco's, cheapo Tesco 2.5s does, does reasonable for both eyes. Anyway, I, I, exactly. use, I might uh, have to go at... Te both at focals. Oh, right. Anyway, but there you go. Anybody who's due cataracts, I mean, everybody told me how easy it was. And of course, I didn't believe them. It is easy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm down. Down. Six in the morning to do the four times a day eye drops. I'm down eight the years year. the water. That was the only thing I didn't like. Anyway, that's, I'm sorry, that's all I managed to do, but I am utterly delighted that my new eye can focus in my camera and I've changed my cameras so that the rear sight is now my right eye, which has always been my dominant eye. For the last two years, I've had to focus through the left eye and the trouble with that is your nose touches the camera's touch mm. screen. And takes pictures. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> you have to switch it off. Right. Now then, I've got one. Peter Van Oss is not here, as you might notice. But he sent me some photographs. So I'll we'll use those next, if that's all right with you. If I can get the right page of my screen here. Which one? That one, yes. Um, and then if I do that. Go on. Yeah. Have you got a monochrome picture? Yes. yes, with an elephant's eye, I should think. Yeah. Yeah, so carving in a, a just called it. Oh, well, that's, I, I modified it. He had actually got it as a different colour. Um, the original colour, where's it gone? Um, sorry, this, this is the original. That's the original one he sent. And I thought, oh, that's not so good. Um, so I uh, made it monochrome, as you just saw. But they're not in the same order, so... <laughs> Can't show you that. So I'll just go back a moment to uh, come on. What's the matter with it now? Oh, oops. Yeah. So there's there's. I could move move that one down to there, and then it will be a bit easier. Right. Start at the beginning. <clears throat> this was his first one, <clears throat> which he took in Italy apparently. Well, that, that was quite a good sort of engraving, but it's in stone and not wood, I suspect. Um, <laughs> He obviously didn't listen to something, but anyway, it's it's interesting, if nothing else. Do you think it was to tell the time or something? Mm. Who knows? Okay, this is one of his here. It, this is from the haunch of venison, the pub. Yeah. And I think that in the middle is a haunch of venison. Mm. And it's, obviously I've just noticed a coin or two coins or oh, more coins. Mm. Lots of there, Peter. Yeah, so there is, yes. <laughs> Never noticed that. Only glanced at it before. It's a one arm band. <laughs> it's worth like, going. One of the, like one of those fairground games where you drop coins in the top and try and get them to fall out the bottom. I wonder, is it worth going to the pub just to see? <laughs> I think it is. Hmm. Let's have another look later on. Anyway, so that's that one. Um, that's the. The one I thought, oh, that red is just glaring in my face. So I thought that can't, why didn't you change it, Peter? So I went into Firestone Viewer and just changed it like that. And I actually increased the contrast a little bit as well. Okay, um, and there's had this one as well. I didn't change the red there. He just calls that Buffalo. And I think that, oh no, this one as well. This, uh, these are, this is lion, that's it. Another carving in wood. I think that's the last one, yes. So there you are. Um, so stop sharing. So that was that was Peter Van Oss's selection of images. Okay. Is there anyone else who's got any more that we haven't seen? Like Stan, for instance. No, I haven't. I got for all of the same thing, but taken at different angles, which you can see if you wish. Okay, yes, yeah, please. Huh. That isn't what I wanted it to do. Uh, <laughs> Try again. No. Don't mind how many times it opens it, does it? Stupid thing. Now, Richard. 
<laughs> You're an expert. <laughs> Well, you might say that. Now, I th thought these would have opened with Fast Stone Viewer, but they didn't, did they? Uh, open with somewhere. Right, this is actually a Bible, believe it or not. You're not sharing, You're not sharing Richard. Are I? No. Uh Oh, that's even more confusing. I've now got to come out of this to share. Am I sharing now, just as a matter yes. of Yeah, but you can now open with. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yes, this is taken from a Bible that's got oh, wooden covers in Richard, 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 we can't see it yet. You've got to go to the um, swap the uh, sharing system. Well, it says sharing, it says stop sharing. No, 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 there's a new share if you go up to it. Yeah, do you want me to press that in? Well, you go to new share and then you can uh, select your other screen because we can't see that, the fast tone viewer screen. You with me? No, it's not doing it at all. Well, oh, yes. I'm going to okay. stop. I'm going to stop yeah, sharing. No, no, we got it. Oh, <laughs> then Richard, got it. come back, come back. We we got it fleetingly. Can you see it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So what's that? Well, it's actually an engraving on a Bible of 1902. It had, the Bible's got wooden covers. Oh, I see. Interesting. Mm. Oh, they're crosses, yes. Of course, typical fast on viewer. I now can't use the arrow keys to move around the picture. So how do I do that now then? Oh. Uh, you're not in for, oh, well, have you tried? I don't know. Just press escape and uh, yeah, you can press escape probably. The screen is stop sharing, okay. I don't mind about that. But what I want to do is that's the pick, that's the thing I want. Let's see if I can. This is stupid. Open with hello, Gene. Some viewer. I can see you. <laughs> All very quiet, she is. I'm not sharing now. You're correct, yes. Of course, the picture is so big I can't get in to stop sharing. <laughs> well, you're not sharing on my screen at all. No, the trouble is, as soon as I got the fast stone viewer there, I can't press the share screen. Well, I've pressed the share screen, and I oh. think. I ought to be able to press that. Yeah, well, that's the photo thing, isn't it? Da, da, da. Oh, Is that it? That's <laughs> it. Yeah. Ah, I can go forward and backwards now. Mm -hmm. And that's just the corner of it with a different, the move slightly so the light changed. Right. Yes. Where was this, Richard? Uh, this is actually in my living room. It's a Bible, it's 1902. Mm. Mm. And that's what's written on the front of it, which I presume is Jerusalem spent in a rather strange way. Mm. Is it spelled correctly? Is it? Oh, three L's. No, there's not three L's. Oh, it's an M. M, yes. Oh, I see. It's the way the end's not joined up. Yeah, I see. Yes, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> so how are those letters put on, Richard? They're carved into the wood. Are they? Oh, yeah, they're just standing out, don't they? They're using a router, I imagine. Hmm. Well, when, uh, when I unshare, I'll show you what it looks like in the, th in the real. Because you can't see me at the moment, can you? Yeah. Well, that, that's the four pictures, anyway. All right, okay. Right, Richard, thank you. And uh, that's what it looks like. Mm. Up front. 
And that's the other side with the Jerusalem oh. that way. Yep, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Never seen a Bible with a wooden cover. Mm. Oh, it was given to my wife, but I'm not quite sure. It's 1902, but it was given to my wife sometime during her church when she went to church, which I presume is some five, six, seven, that sort of age. Of, if I don't know. Okay. Now uh, it's um, roughly 11 o'clock. No, not quite. But it's time for a little break, perhaps. For 10 minutes, maybe. Yeah. Uh, sound good. And then we can move on to um, um, Mr. Sutcliffe. All okay. right. I'm going to make myself a coffee. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> I see Anne's disappeared. <laughs> <clears throat> Nobody there at all. <laughs> all these domestic interiors. I think we can actually stop now. There you go. Right. Now, um, when I was away last week, one of the days out was to Whitby. And Whitby is famous for its abbey and um, What's um, Mary Shelley? Probably Mary Wollstonecroft, I'm not sure. It's Mary Shelley's mother. Um, and funnily enough, later in the week, we went to Beverly and I found a door with a blue plaque on to Mary Wollstonecroft. I never knew she was in Beverly, but there was a radio program called um, Am I Dead to You or something like that. It's a podcast they are on the BBC and all about Mary Wollstonecroft, a whole hour of it. And they did mention Beverly on in passing. Anyway, going back <laughs> to Whitby, when we were going through Whitby, we came across the, the Jet Museum. And as you all know, Jet is a stone made from compressed fossilized wood of a sort of fir tree type family of wood. And it's that they're about 350 million years old, these bits of jet. And the jets are found in the cliffs, the rocks are found in the cliffs around Whitby. So there's a big industry in Whitby and it all became rather fashionable in Victorian times to have, to have jet um, jewelry. And anyway, we went into the jet muse uh, museum and there was jet for sale if you wanted it. And the person I was with went off and bought something oh, a huge price for a little tiny little black thing. <laughs> and while I was looking at the screen there projected at the back was Frank Sutcliffe Me Meadow Sutcliffe's photographs on. And they were a very big screen and a very good quality uh, projector. And uh, I thought, oh gosh, interesting. I'd forgotten about Frank's Meadow Sutcliffe. So I thought, no, I'll photograph, I photographed the screen a few times, took a few clips from there, and I even bought a postcard that cost me lots of money, nearly five pounds, um, of one of his photographs. And they're all sepia, and they're all timeless. They're all taken on plate cameras, big plate camera, like about 12 by uh, 8 size, or 10 by 8, or something like that. Whole plate, or more something more. Quite big plates, they were. Um, and I even came across a video of uh, a man who, called Mike Shaw, who worked with his son, um, with um, Frank's son. And he had one of the, his original plates and his original camera. So I thought, I know, let's do another photographic biography. And so that's what I've decided to do, whether you like it or not. And just let me go see which ones I'm going to show you first. <laughs> um, 
I'll start with, we'll start with this. I'll start, I'll start trying to share now if I can get to a, a sharing bit. Right. Uh, which is, where's it gone? Ah, lost it. Oh, that's not it. Funny, isn't it? How they all just, oh, show all windows. I couldn't see all the windows. That, that doesn't help. Oh, no. That's very odd. Very odd. Look at that one, see what it's like. Hold control to select multiple windows. It's not what I'm after. Curse it. What I'm after is down here. Why can't I see that? Right, uh, <clears throat> we all have these difficulties, don't we? I'll, I'll start again. Well, there it is. Why wasn't it there before? Right. And that's in the way. That's in the way. Slideshow, it's going to stop. Right, here we go. There he is. There's a photograph of Frank Meadow Sutcliffe, and he lived from 1853 to 1941. I thought you'd like to know that. Um, he was born in Leeds, not in Whitby. Um, and his father was a printer, but it was also something else, I think. But he had to be a keen amateur photographer. Mm -hmm. So in 1871, the family moved to Whitby, and it was here that Frank took up his photography. And unable to find a suitable studio, <clears throat> they moved to Tunbridge Wells in Kent, of all things, with his wife. This is uh, an enemy. But he found he was unable to make a satisfactory living in the more competitive environment of the South. So he came back to Whitby after only four years. Um, and at the bottom, you see a couple of his photographs. Uh, the one on the right is probably the most famous one of his, I think. And, <clears throat> and the one on the right here is his most infamous one. And <laughs> if you read what it said down here, one of his best known pictures a group of naked children playing in a boat is a fine example of his natural, almost reportage approach. Mm -hmm. However, it landed into considerable trouble, being cited by the church as an example of depravity, and they excommunicated him. <laughs> How about that? <clears throat> so it was as bad as the camera club used to be when we had um, Kelvin in the club. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> But he won many international awards, <clears throat> and it was back a moment. Oh, how do I go back on this thing? Oh, there we are. Um, I say many international exhibitions for his landscapes and his documentary work, <clears throat> particularly in Whitby itself. And he he talked to the people there, and he got them to pose for him in, in quite natural ways, which is quite unusual really in those days um, and uh, so you know, this, this was his first camera uh, or a similar, no this a camera similar to that was his first camera actually it's 15 by 12 inch plates and it was three foot long <laughs> so and moreover he used a wet collodion process to do his pictures now those are very difficult to do because you have to coat your plate, your very clean glass plate, with the wet collodion uh, solution. You have to drain it, and you have to photo you have to expose it within 15 minutes of doing that. So you have to be all set up outside. You're doing it all outside, of course. You can imagine the difficulties of doing that. Um, it was complicated. It was awkward. Um, but he got, he soon produced good results, which is remarkable. Um, here is on the right one of his results, if you like, a man posing with his <laughs> life jacket made of cork. Anyway, um, his father, who um, earlier on knew was, was supposed to be a printer, he was also a watercolour <laughs> watercolor <laughs> painter called Thomas. Anyway, Frank spent much of his early life surrounded by artworks and had early ambitions to be a painter. Anyway, his father was rather ill, and so his uh, Frank Frank's Sutcliffe's education was cut short. And so he went off to work as a clerk at Tetley's Brewery. Um, 
and after 18 months his father recovered apparently and so he returned home and he continued with his photography but then his father died very soon after that in 1871 when he was 18 so he was then the head of the household so he had to provide for his seven younger siblings so he must have had a pretty difficult life at that point um, he got his first commission the following year when Francis Frith, I'm sure you might know Francis Frith, paid him to photograph abbeys and castles in Yorkshire. And these form part of the Frith's project to photograph all the towns, villages and landmarks in the United Kingdom and were to be mass produced and sold as local views. And <clears throat> there we have on the right a ship just in the harbour in Whitby and I think if you look through the spars you can see the um, Whitby Abbey outlined by uh, you can just see it just there that, can you see that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. right moving on to um, this this picture here shows the bridge across the harbour entrance which is a swing bridge it swings around um, and when we went there last week we got the, the man suddenly came out of a shed at one end of the bridge rang a bell vigorously just as we walked onto the bridge and then <laughs> he closed a gate behind us and at the other end there was another gate closed and there we were on the bridge they were about to open the bridge anyway we walked across and they left it open for us to get through and then they swung the bridge round and it was open for at least an hour for a dredger to come through however um the commissions such as such as Fritz brought in little money and Frank decided to set up a portrait studio believing that money was more prosperous he went down to Tunbridge Wells that's when that happened and it was a disaster so he returned and there's there's the harbour entrance again and all the smoke coming from the chimneys there a very a very hazy sort of photograph that one it's probably, a, there may be a better quality one, but I've never seen it on, <coughs> online anywhere. That's the best one I've seen. <coughs> they carefully protected the, uh, the Sutcliffe images. Very, very few are available for uh, public showing. You have to buy them, basically. Including the postcard I've got, I'm not showing you that because it's copyright. <coughs> <laughs> anyway, he uh, carried on with his new studio and it was nevertheless thriving and during the holiday seasons he and his wife would regularly finish the day's work mounting photographs at 2am in the morning. I remember doing that uh, in the past <laughs> um, and this was one of his um, images of two women and sorry, three women I think and three children in somewhere in, uh, well, obviously a, obviously a coffee shop, judging by the pit at the top. Can't hear you, Roger. Sorry? Did you say something? Yeah, I said that's good. I said, looks if you step down to the, in, into the cottage. Oh, yes, 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 it is. Um, it must have been a nice warm day when they did that, I think. <laughs> it looks like they're playing a game down there. Five stones, or whatever they call it. Um, Why well, pose is interesting as well. Isn't it? Yes, oh, he's, he was very good at getting people to pose, like this one here. I think that's a pretty good um, way of doing it. Now, uh, he aimed to push the limits of conventional photography. He, un, he, as I said, he disliked the unnatural stiff poses favoured by most at the time, and to produce a picture like the one on the right, which looks almost natural, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, you can look at, I think, a bigger version here. I've just enlarged the set of that one there. What sort of shutter speeds would he need with that collodion process? At least a second, I would think. And yet they're not moving, are they? These little kids, which are <laughs> very difficult to get <laughs> to not move. And there's a little old lady sticking her head out of here. Look, that's quite a sort of natural thing, isn't it? And I, I think what they're doing is oysters. I'm not quite sure. 
can't remember now. So it's a well-known uh, picture of his. Okay. Um, I don't know what this basket work thing is here. Is it a lid for a, one of these baskets, perhaps? Anyway, um, this one, um, writings revealed that he resented the amount of time spent doing formal portraits of babies and children when he would rather have been photographing outdoors, of which he was passionate. This, anyway, this is one of his outdoor photos, a guy demonstrating how to cut open a fish, I think. A nice bottom view, you might say. Um, you see, if that had been Stan, he would have complained. That it, why would he the back view rather than the front view? Stan wouldn't complain about that, would you, Stan? Richard, the thought never entered my head. Oh, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. well, intrigued to see how popular hats were in those days. Well, he had to keep up somehow. Yes. You see, they blow up. Even the little boys got a hat on, didn't they? Yep, everybody wore hats. There's nobody there without a hat. Absolutely nobody. Extraordinary. Um, right, moving on. Um, here they've all got hats as well. So, um, Sutcliffe was able to produce striking photographs from very simple subject met matter. Men leaning against a rail, sun streaming through the sail of a boat at the quayside, two women chatting in an alleyway, these scenes were there for all to see, but only Sutcliffe took notice of them and photographed them. So street photography was alive and well in his day. And uh, there they are, cockle pickers, whatever they are. And I say, Peter, what's interesting about these images, from my point of view, is there's all space between the four of them yeah. and the way they grew. Um, it's, it's a lovely balanced image, actually. They're all it. looking at one another, aren't they? There's yeah. a connection. There's a connection. There's a real story to this picture. Yes, it's one of his one of his best. I must admit. It's a horizon sloping a bit. Did you say at the start that he posed his group pictures like this, Peter? I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, did, did you say that he posed these pictures? He oh, got the group to yeah. pose. Oh, he, po he got them all to pose, yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be a natural thing, but it makes it look natural. That's mm. the... So there you go. Um, and by the 1890s, he won many international photographic prizes, and his writings on the theory and practice regularly appeared in a number of publications, including the amateur photographer. How about that? <clears throat> This is one picture I quite like. I like the, the, the footwear this woman's got, the lovely shiny leather there. Um, <clears throat> and they're having another conversation with each other, aren't they, Stan? Yes, they are. Yes, there's, there's a connection between the four of them. Yep, yep, yep. And two of them are smoking, only two of them, yes. Right, <laughs> moving on. Uh, here's a boat, man leaning against a boat or two men leaning against boats. Um, he strongly believed in the photograph, photography's artistic potential at a time when many regarded it as inferior to painting and only useful as a means of recording people and scenes. In 1892, became a member of, a founder member of the Linked Ring. Uh, we, we could talk about, that, talk about that in more detail if you wanted. Um, an organization dedicated to the promotion of photography as a fine art. So, moving on, you can see this photograph enlarged here. That gentleman is rather large, isn't he? <laughs> yes. Yes. <clears throat> Who does he remind you of? Can't think. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but you can still see in the background a hazy collection of buildings. Presumably it was slightly misty or something, but it gives real atmosphere to that photograph, I think. Yes, it does. So um, then one, uh, at one point, Kodak came along um, with these sort of cameras on the right. This is a camera from 1903, I think. 
um, and he began experimenting with the new pocket cameras of this, well, which this is an example. And he was given one of the company's latest models in exchange for providing um, with photographs made with them. So actually it's quite a sophisticated camera, isn't it? With the, the front at the bottom there, able to <clears throat> roll in and out incrementally. <laughs> An actual viewfinder. Anyway, so moving on to the next one. Um, <coughs> more photojournalistic, the ones he did for Eastman Kodak and um, in style. And uh, although the results were inevitably an inferior technical quality with the Kodak camera, he enjoyed the freedom of being able to photograph people in more spontaneous and informal style. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether this photograph is one of those, but it's, that's the best quality I could find. I'm just not sure what this woman in the middle is holding in the, that funny shape there is. Very odd. <clears throat> Looks like a set of bagpipes. Yeah. Sure. I was just about to say that. Mm. Well, is it? No, surely not. Not in the middle of the beach. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I'll, I'll just put another copy of that for, for you. Um, Peter, excuse us. We're going to have to go now. Thank you. Okay. Right over, Roger. And Elizabeth. Bye, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, Roger. Bye, Elizabeth. Bye. Well, Sutcliffe was able to say that it freshened his interest in outdoor photography to a marked degree. He wrote an amateur photographer in 1900. My only regret is that I didn't have it years ago. Elsewhere, he felt that he had been born 40 years too soon and wondered what images he might have created with 20th century handheld cameras. Now, there's a speculation for you. Indeed it is. Um, anyway, this particular sh shot which I showed you earlier is one of his famous shots uh, called Dock End, Whitby, in 1880. And you notice it's got clouds in the sky at uh, that period, with those sort of wet place things, you couldn't get that. So it, what he did was taken the photograph of a sky and added it in. So this is a, a double thing uh, from another negative. Now that required a considerable amount of doing in the dark room in those days. So I presumably he, print, he did it. He printed the things. He it wasn't just the negatives. He did actually print the things from negatives. Oh, oh yeah, oh, he did all the printing as well. Yes. Yeah. But adding a, an extra image on, it wasn't particularly easy in those days. But he no, managed to see. Okay, um, there it is, there's an enlarged. And you can easily see the abbey at the top there now, Whitby Abbey, which is haunted by Frankenstein and people like that. <clears throat> um, and uh, eventually he closed his portrait studio in 1922 took up the position of president of the Whitby Literary and Philosophical Society. How about that? But he continued taking photographs. Uh, later on, he lamented the passing of the more traditional ways of life that he had done so much to immortalize. So he, you couldn't really go back and take fishermen doing what they did in the past. So, but I put this photograph in because he didn't just take pictures in Whitby, he took landscapes like this one here. Um, so on the left, I've got this sort of little quick summary of his life, the biography. Um, and uh, he began photographing in 1868 when he was, what, 15 or so? <clears throat> uh, he was doing a 15, I mean, 15 by 12 inch camera at that point when he was 15. I think it's remarkable in itself. And then they moved to Ucote Hall. I don't know about that. Um, then he was commissioned in 1872 for Francis Frith uh, and then commissioned by the famous critic John Ruskin to photograph views around his house. Now he lived in the Lake District, I believe, uh, on one of those lakes, Lake Windermere, is it? Come on, no, nobody knows. Uh, <coughs> there it is, signed at the bottom by Frank himself. Okay, 
So that's rushing water. So you can tell what the shutter speed is, um, uh, Terry. Can't you, Terry? Have you gone away? No, I'm, I'm just looking at it and considering, yes, it's got to be about a second. Yes, I should think so. <laughs> right, OK, I'll move on. Um, this is more of a biography. When he opened the portrait in, uh, studio in Tunbridge Wells, and then he came back to Whitby and uh, the new studio. Uh, and he lives around Whitby the rest of his life. <clears throat> and he opened a bigger studio in 1894 in Skinner Street. And then in 1897, he used the, camp, the camp Kodak miniature cameras. Um, and then he closed his studio portraits uh, in 1922. Um, in 1935, he was made a fellow of the Royal Photographic Society. And he died, uh, what, five years later, six years later, during the Second World War, aged 87. So there you are, there you have it. Frank Sutcliffe, Meadow Sutcliffe. So there you are. <coughs> That's what I uh, produced for you on that. Um, let me see if I can get out of this now. Click to exit. Yes, that's right. So I'll shut that down and um, stop sharing for the moment. <laughs> that's, that's step one. What's step two? Um, I've got some links and things here. I've got this set of links. Oh, you can't see it. You should not see it. Silly me. Um, and that's that one, I think, yes. So I've got these set of links which I'll also send you. Um, there's this, this interview here, which is about um, 50 minutes long, with a chap called Mike Shaw, who has the, his uh, Sutcliffe's original plate camera. And all these are quite interesting. Um, there's one by Jethro Tull. Now, some of you may know who he is. Anybody want to admit knowing Jethro Tull? Isn't he a singer? Yes, but he's also a, a fan of, of uh, Sutcliffe, and this YouTube is quite interesting um, as a result. And then this stuff here, Greystone Bird, is another interesting character that's worth looking at. And at the bottom is the, the link to his gallery. Uh, I might be able to get that now, but um, we've also got another, oh no, wait a minute, I'll forget that for a moment. Um, just continue with, with him at the moment. What's that one there? And that's the one I'll show you earlier. I'll just get rid of that one. I'm just adjusting things at the background at the moment. Um, you've seen that one. Um, I'll stop sharing for the moment when I figure out what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Got so many, too many things online at the moment to figure out what's the best. I know, did a, did a little. Where's it gone? Um, I was in here, I think. Right. I must have put it in. Oh, here we go. Maybe it's there. Um, got so many things on my computer, I have a job finding it. Right, here we go. I'll share you share in a moment. Let me get back to. <laughs> <coughs> We're now going to try and share a little video, which might be tricky, but we'll see. Um, we should see a little tiny screen in the middle. Yes? No? Yes. All right, so I'll click play and we can see it with the music, hopefully. <laughs> I've put down the left what, what it is, it's the harbour, and you notice these two people conveniently positioned there. Uh, um, and this is the harbour entrance. And that's the dredger that I had the open swing bridge for. And these are padlocks. Padlocks by the key.
the abbey up there you see and the and the church on the left here um, don't think you've got the right picture on here oh we got nets on this one yeah the, the lobster pots in the foreground yeah that's right but i'm showing at the top of it you can see the skyline there's a because there's the old abbey there no you can't see the skyline it's off the top of my screen it may be on somebody's oh is it well it's it fills my screen nicely. So you can't see the whole thing. How very sad. Anyway, no, right. it's been magnified. Your um, cursor is a very large arrow. Yes, it is. How strange. Well, it's not on mine. Why is that? So on that picture, when you go to the next one, the, the arrow is magnified. I'll stop. Stop, stop. Oh, I see. That's very odd. I seem to have two copies of it, I think, <laughs> running at the same time, or something like that. Hmm. I'll start again. This time I'll try to try it once more. That's there. Yes, that's correct. That's there. Share. You should see the little picture. I'll do it with the browse control instead. Then you won't have the music. Um, right, if I move on to... Now, can you see the, the sky now? See, even less. No. Put your cursor on the picture. Yeah. Yeah, it, the whole thing is too enlarged. Somehow it's got magnified. Well, how's that? I don't know. Is that better? Ah, yes, it's coming in now, yes. Better. Well, how's so, see the houses now, but you certainly can't see the top of the Whitby. Quirky, how amazing. How about now? Can you see that top sky now? No, can't see no. sky. Houses are at the top of the picture. It's getting yeah, better. No, That's better. You can. Yes. That's yeah. it. <laughs> it's about one inch high on my screen now, <laughs> right in the middle of my screen. How extraordinary. Let's just go back to the. Oh, I have to do it for each picture then. Well, that's awkward, isn't it? So, hmm, let's see. Um, Anyway, there you are. There's the harbour entrance. <laughs> then it goes big again, I suppose, does it? Yeah. I think it probably does, yes. Well, if you put your cursor on the screen, you can see where it's big because it just, if cursor size gets enormous. I see. So, you, oh, how very strange. Um, well, I give up on that then. I'll we'll stop it, I think. Um, if, I can, if I can get to the right point to stop it. Uh, how do I stop it? I have to stop sharing to stop it. And then I'll go to here and oh, still I haven't stopped it. <laughs> Some things we can't kill, you know. <laughs> anyway, that, that was it, just a, a supposed to show you um, um, the scenes around Whitby itself. So, right. Now, um, so having done that, showing you the bit about Sutcliffe and his life, I thought, ah, we'll go back to what we did back in last year, October last year, when we did some photo um, bi biographies. And we did people like Faye Godwin and Francis Frith and La Tigue and uh, Salgado, Eggleston, William Eggleston, Fox Talbot, Benton, Paul Hill, Minor White, Imogen Cunningham, Gary Winograd, Eugene Leachard, I think you did that, Terry. Um, you listening? Yes, I, I can't remember who I did actually. Well, I did first, and we went to see the following night down at Ringwood. Sorry, it was Roger that did that one, Eugene Meatyard. You did, um, let me have a look. Uh, you did Paul Hill. Oh, yes, yeah, rugby. Rugby? Yeah, I think he did rugby shots, Paul Hill. Oh, no, he doesn't, he does landscapes. Monochrome. I think you're talking about the one that I did. Oh, okay. 
Uh, Richard, what did you do? You did Lartigue. No, I didn't. Oh. You, all those totally missed up. <laughs> we, went, we went down to Ringwood and saw him in person the following day or a day afterwards. Oh, that chap, yes. Um, anyway, uh, we did quite a few. Um, we did two whole sessions on that. So, Who did I do, Peter? Uh, have a look. You did uh, Heather Angel. And me. Uh, hold on. And you also did Fenton. Who's me? Anne. Oh, Anne, right. <laughs> you did Minor White. So that right. means anything. Yeah. And uh, what else you did? We did it on um, Anne Leibovitz. Oh, yes. Does any of those names mean anything to you, Elaine? Right, good. That's excellent. <laughs> you can do all of those, then, Elaine. <laughs> so are we supposed to pick somebody famous, then? And no. recreate no, what you did for I've Sutcliffe? Made, I've made a list. Oh. And I'm going to farm this list out to you. And the idea is that you... Uh, take this person and investigate them online or by other means. Uh, you might go to the library and see pictures in a book, or, or you may have books yourself. All manner of ways of doing it. Magazines, of course, uh, occasionally do this sort of thing. So there's plenty of ways of, of um, finding a biography of these sort of people. So let me show you the list that I've produced for you. I've just got to get to the sharing bit. Um, that's the one. So here you should have a list of, have I got it all? No, I've got the button. That's it. Right, so as you can see, I've produced 18 names here. And I've tried to balance the me females with the males. So there are people like Cindy Sherman, Sally Mann, Julia Margaret Cameron, Lee Miller, Vivian Mayer, and Floria Sigismondi, plus Melissa Odevmo and Dorothea Lang, and uh, so actually more women than men, I think. Um, but uh, I think the person who takes Harold Lloyd will be amazed that he ever was a photographer. Mm. You must well, know. The, act the actor. Yep, the very one. Right. Um, and he was a good photographer. And the next, number two is an interesting man. He uh, is a very humorous man, uh, more humorous than uh, um, the chap that did the jumping dogs. Um, what uh, your name escapes me for the moment. <laughs> um, of course, there are too many names to remember. Somebody did Charlie White. Uh, I always think that Eugene Meachard is one of the nicest names. But at this time, I think Floria Sigismondi is a very good name, isn't it? And I might be able to find something about her here. Our cat was called Sigismond. Oh. <laughs> Long time ago. A cat called Sigismond? Yeah. Good heavens. Now, where's Floria? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, there she is. Um, if I share, where's it gone? It doesn't seem to work as normal today. I think you're already sharing, Peter. I know, but well, didn't. I couldn't get to a different share. Well, this is this is what Floria Sigis Mundy looks like. Now, does that fill the whole screen and more, or what? Um, the whole screen, that one, I think, Peter. Well, can you see the word famous photographers at the top? In a red. Yes, I can see Black Friday at the bottom. All right, so you can see what I can see, yes. Anyway, that's Flurry uh, Siggy's Monday. And if we go down to the bottom here, you can see the sort of picture she did. Here they are scrolling through. <clears throat> so she's got a dead bird on her head there and a dead bird in a cage there. <laughs> and I don't know what she's got in her hand there. I can't quite see. But... Um, I don't expect to see these photographs. I expect to see some other photographs of Floria Siggy's Mundy. Um, so come back to uh, New Show. That's right, New Show. It works now. Why is... Go back to the list. Right, go back. I see I managed to do that. Amazing. Worked. So um, we've got this list here. Um, it might be as well to work out which ones you'd like to do. So if I take your names down and uh, we'll see if we can do that. So let me write some names down. I'll put Roger and Elizabeth down and give them something to do. 
Uh, meantime, I'm a Peter Van Os, yes. Um, you might as well give me one to do, because I'm not going to pick anybody out of that lot. <laughs> so just pick one for me. <laughs> OK, Richard. Well, yeah. in that case, um, uh, let me think. Dorothea Lang, I think, would do for you. Did we not study her the last time, Peter? Uh, I looked through my list and I didn't see her name. I seem to recognise the name from somewhere. Well, I looked through my list. She, well, she's almost certainly mentioned because she's very famous. <clears throat> but and I of, think we mentioned Robert Kappa as well. Yeah, but that's also not on my <laughs> list. We actually uh, did the video, uh, the, the biography for. Maybe they were two that weren't selected. Yes, well, no, I can't even see my list to look select from. <clears throat> Anyway, put you didn't get the right people with the right names when you read them out just now, so I'm not sure what's going on. So, right, who wants to do Floria Sigismundi? <laughs> or who wants to do Duane Michels? I think he's well worth doing. Well, I'd be interested to see what Harold Lloyd, um, okay, yeah, yeah. Harold, Harold, Harold Lloyd did. Okay, yeah, right. Good, got your name down, written now. Um, oh, better write it down myself. Stan, what about you, Stan? You're muted, Stan. Who are we missing? Um, oh, Peter Van Arn. I must have more than that. Oh, fantastic. Stan! Who would you like to choose from this list? None of them. Why? No, no, I haven't got time to do, do this sort of research in. I'm not. I'm interested to see results, but I'm not interested in doing it myself. I might choose somebody perhaps not on the list. Well, there are hundreds of those. <laughs> okay. Right, I understand. Uh, Janet, how about you? I'll do Sally Mann. Okay, do You know what she did? No her... idea. <laughs> Are you well, going to send, send us your list that you're writing down now through, Peter? I shall do so, yes. Thank you very much. Apparently it was a rather controversial photographer, you'll find. Okay, now Alan, what about you? I'll have a go, Julia Margaret Cameron. Oh, right. Okay. That's plenty you of... Going over to the Isle of Wight to see her? Oh, uh, it's too bloody expensive on that ferry. Oh, all right. <laughs> yes, but Vivian, this Vivian Mayer, for instance, a very interesting character. Um, you know about her, do you? Well, she took photographs throughout her life on a, um, a, a square format ro Rolleiflex type camera. <clears throat> and <clears throat> she never published anything. And when she died, they found her house full of rolls of unexposed, uh, sorry, exposed film, but not processed. Oh, I know that story. And she processed them all, and they're staggeringly good pictures. And she was just unknown in her own lifetime. So, I mean, that's a very interesting character. And Lee Miller is another one that was very interesting. She was a, uh, a, a an art. She was a model for various photographers. And then she decided to take photography, and she did war photography as well. She was in the Second World War, taking into right at the war fronts. Very dangerous. Things like that. Cindy Evans is a uh, Sherman, I mean, is another interesting female photographer. Franz Lanting is a brilliant landscape, uh, natural history photographer. I would have thought that would have done Stan well. He done that well with that one, Stan. Um, anyway, Greystone Bird is another photographer very similar to Sutcliffe, but completely unknown to me. All I know is his name, really. Uh, so I'd like to see more. And Trey Ratcliffe is another fascinating character when you get into his. But you don't have to choose one. You could choose more than you could choose more from this list if you wished. Uh, I'm not saying you have, only have to do one photographer. But you may choose one that um, I'm choosing for Roger or something like that. But that doesn't matter. There'll be different, different, a different slant. So what I want you to do is to get the photographs online or whatever. And also, I want it to be accompanied with a short life history. 
So in other words, sort of mini lecture on the, on the photography you've chosen. Born one date, died another date. Sorry? I said born one date, died another date. End of lecture. Oh, I see. <laughs> Is that what you want to do, Stan? Do you want to be lazy about these things? I thought you were a key photographer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but not this sort of thing. Oh, this is history of photography. And it's part of my group, this group's thing that I do. History. Fine. Fine. And I think if you, oh, if you, if we talk to Diana, she, um, the chap there that does it, um, Bob Hay, has done a lot on the history of photography. He's done a whole series of lectures. Um, and it might be worth looking at what he's already produced to find some some bio, biography. <clears throat> but he's found interesting facts, I know. I've looked at one or two of his, his videos <clears throat> um, that uh, throw light into a different area that I've never seen before or heard of before. So <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Right. Okay, I'll do, but did Terry decide on one? I can't remember. No, I've not selected one. I'd like to look, look at them and select one from the list and then make okay. a decision in a couple of days. That's all right. That's all right. That's a good idea. Greystone bird sounds interesting if, if you, you haven't found anything. Well, what you need to do is to look at, see what you can find. If it's not interesting, then change to another one or do another one, whichever you wish. And there are a lot more photographers I could find. I mean, if you look, oh no, you can't see. Um, there's a, a, a website I've got with lots of names on that you can have a look at briefly. That's where I got Floria Siggy's Monday from, which I've never heard of before. <laughs> <clears throat> so there we are. What's the time? It's time to stop, isn't it? More can I less. ask when, when is the date of the next meeting? When have we got to do this by? Oh, oh, panic, panic, panic. Um, <clears throat> I don't think you've got one in December, am I right? Just one moment, please. I'm not quite sure at this instant. Um, you know. did have 24th of December, but you were going away. <laughs> <You're right. coughs> 24th is a, is a Friday, it is indeed, yes. So it won't be the 24th of December. Where's my calendar got to? Um, um, so the next practical photography will be the 31st of December. How about, how about the 31st of December? No? Yes? Okay by me. No good okay for by me. me. No good for me. I shall be away. Well, all right. Well, we can send you the video of what we ever do and so forth, if that's okay. Yeah. If I, if I get something done, I'll email it to you. When you say you're going away, you're going overseas or something? Uh, no, we're going up to Hexham. Yes. For Christmas. And oh, the right. New Year. Well, I'm going away at Christmas as well. So I'm not, st I'm not staying till the 31st of this, whatever I said. Yeah, well, we'll, <laughs> we won't be back till early January. Oh, it's all right for some, isn't it? Well, I uh, need to be um, imposed on my sister-in-law and get, get some back. <laughs> well, I'm going to impose on my sister over Christmas, but um, she invited me, so I mean, yes, I I'm got... going to impose on my daughter-in-law's birthday happens to be on the, on the 31st. All but right. Unfortunately, it's in Australia, so I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Why don't you go to the end of January, Peter? The what? Go to the date at the end of January. Um, let's have a look. I've got it down as the 21st of January. 21st of January as well. If that's all right. I'm sure it didn't go that far. Well, I've got my calendar here, it goes up to whatever date you like. So I've got onward on the 20. Uh, 8th of January and DI plus on the on the 14th and practical photography on the 31st of December. So if you don't want to come to that stand, we'll be around on the 21st of January. All right. So so this this video business 
is for the 31st of December? Well, we'll probably do it over two sessions, I should think, because it gets quite complicated, or it can be complicated. These, these biographies can be quite long. Some people, uh, one Jenny, I think, did a, a beautiful one on uh, that of Arc, Antarctic photographer, um, did a very good talk. Something oh, funny enough, either Ponting or... Oh, Ponting or what, yes. Or Ponting. Hurley was what was going through my mind, but... I may not have time to do anything. There's now you got a plaque in the market square. Sorry, Richard. Ponton has now got a plaque in the market square, a blue plaque, because he came from Salisbury. Oh. That's why we liked him, you see. <laughs> anyway, um, Jenny did uh, Fox, Henry Fox Talbot. And I've, I've written on my notes better than I can do. <laughs> so she did a very good talk on that. But you didn't, you, you didn't do Frank Hurley then, just Ponting? Yes. Well, she did, whatever. She did it um, later on. Um, I don't know where she did that. She did Charlie Waite as well. Anyway, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not promising because I've got to write several talks for my group. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, I'm, I've got several groups, not just one. <laughs> um, anyway, right. I think that's enough for today. We've uh, exhausted ourselves, I hope. Um, Are we going I, out today, Peter? Uh, no, where would we go? I don't know. And who would come with me, apart from yourself? Would you come, Anne? Yes. Oh, right. Um, well, we won't, be photo photo we won't be uh, taking photos of where we're going if we've got this subject, will we? Well, we can find Henry Ponting's um, plaque in the Market Square, couldn't we? <laughs> yeah, that's true. By Subway, I think it is. Near what? By Subway. Subway, where's that then? Well, on the, uh, the, the bit of the market is on the, shall we say, uh, <coughs> the right of the War Memorial for somewhere else to say it. Right. Opposite Debenhams, then, or something like that. No, 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 no. On the uh, on the uh, on the vertical bit. Oh, I see. Are you meaning Queen Street? No, I don't. Oh, the opposite Queen end. Street. The market. You can walk up the market on that side as well as the other side. And Queen Street is the opposite side of Queen Street. So it's on the opposite side from Queen Street, right? Okay. <laughs> as long as it's a park somewhere. Okay, right. Um, so, who wants to come on a little walk about uh, for a while? Okay. Anybody? Sorry, I, I missed all of that because my connection died and I had to reconnect. So, what have you decided to do? We, we decided to go out to a pub somewhere. Oh. I think. <laughs> and we well, could do the we could do the haunch of venison. What a good idea! Yes, what a good idea! Yes, all right. So we have, to, we have to get into town somehow. Can you do that, Alan? I uh, hope so, yeah. What, what sort of time are you talking about? Well, it's got to be at least one o'clock. Right, uh, okay. What about Janet? Okay, in... one o'clock. Is it one o'clock? Yeah, you're only a step away, aren't you? Yeah. I'll give them a ring and book a table, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, Terry? You look very serious, Terry. Terry! He's not what he's not listening, is he? He's not frozen. Terry! Can you hear me? It, it's got a picture up now. It's what? Well, his picture's up. What's well, not? I'm going to stop the recording anyway.